Hello, and welcome to Wesley United Methodist Church of Trenton, Missouri. Our church is located at 113 East 9th Street, which is on the corner of 9th and Washington in Trenton, Missouri. You can call our office between the hours of 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, Monday through Friday at 660-359-6762, or visit our website at wesleyunitedmethodist.us. Now we invite you to open your heart, mind, and body to the Word of God with Rev. Barry Bulware. Thank you for your stewardship. Oh, <laughs> it's when, you know those <laughs> you know those little bugs that look like ladybugs. I I forget what they are, but it's on Holy Scripture. Uh, <laughs> so I I have to. Oh God, the bug. <laughs> Smite that fellow. <laughs> We are in the Old Testament and the book of Jeremiah, and we are in the 29th chapter, beginning with the 10th verse. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, desires the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope, plans for a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. I will be found by you declares the Lord, and I will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. May God bless this reading of his holy written word. Please be seated. Perhaps you've heard the story about the little boy who had an argument with his mom, and I guess it was pretty heated too, because he decided he was going to run away from home. So he went outside and went all the way to the sidewalk, and then since his house was on the corner, he walked to the corner, and there he stood. And he kind of paced back and forth and back and forth. And there was a neighbor man who was walking down the sidewalk and he said, well, what are you doing out here? I see you walking back and forth. What are you doing out here, Tommy? And Tommy said, I've run away from home. And the neighbor said, well, I'm sorry to hear that. You haven't gone very far. You're just 20 feet away from your home. Why are you standing here on the corner? And Tommy said, Mom doesn't let me cross the street. (laughs) Well, little Tommy isn't going to get very far away from home unless he has a plan, is he? I think to the last one, all three of the kids that I helped bring into the world ran away. I I think that's true. And when I came into your life, Peggy, and to that of Ryan's, he probably had stopped running away by that time. But as parents, we know what that is like, don't we? No matter who you are and no matter how old or young you might be, you don't get very far in this world if you don't have a plan. Now with that thought in mind, let's go back and relook at this morning's scripture. Here's the important thing to keep in mind about the prophet Jeremiah, because he's one of the major prophets in the Old Testament. He stayed with the people when they were on exile. In other words, he was exiled with them. He had told before the people that God would punishment, 
punish them if they didn't turn their ways back and faithfully be in a relationship with God. But the people didn't change. And so the Babylonians conquered the Israelites and drove them into foreign lands. Jeremiah was among the thousands of Israelites who were driven out of the Holy Land. That makes Jeremiah in need of hope, just like the rest of the people were in need of hope. And although his prophecy can, contains its fair share of doom and gloom, if you read Jeremiah carefully, you will see that he truly is a prophet of hope. The text for today was a promise of hope. Really, this text is so inspiring. God's plans for Israel had not come to an end simply because they had been disobedient and God allowed the Babylonians to bring them into exile and take them off to foreign lands. In 70 years, God will bring these exiled Jews and their next generations of young ones back to the promised land. The temple will be restored. The city wall will be rebuilt. And God will bless not only the people with prosperity, God will even replenish the livestock and restore the fertility of the land itself. You see, God has a plan for these people. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this land. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and pray to me and I will listen to you. And for chapter after chapter after chapter, after the reading that we have for today, you begin to see the plans that God has for Israel when they come back to the promised land. The relationship between the people and God will be restored. And how are we to believe such things? Because God has a plan. God will bring the people back. The original covenant with them will be reinstated. The people will be faithful to God and God will be faithful to his people. Long before we become stewards of God, it is God who is already and has been always our steward. In fact, God never stops being our steward. The theological word that incorporates this line of thinking is called the providence of God. And I'm sure you all have heard of that theological term. The Bible insightfully reveals God as our provider. Sometimes it might seem as if the Christian faith is only about the things God wants from us. Nothing could be further from the truth. The principal truth of the Bible is about our God who wants to provide for us. 